This is how bad the drought is getting in the Karoo. People are eating cats and dogs and tortoises. They are crying with hunger. There are increasingly desperate calls for help as the region around Hrafrenet continues to suffer a devastating drought. The area of Klip Plot, that's about 120 kilometers from the city of Hrafrenet, is particularly hard hit. And I'm joined now by Dr. Imtiaz Suleiman, Director of Charity Gift of the Givers. Uh, good evening, Doctor. Thank you very much for your time. Now, I know that you were in Klip Plot about six weeks ago and you returned last week uh, to drill boreholes. Could you tell us, is is the situation better or worse? Uh, good evening, Sally. It's worse. That's why we are back. When we were there six weeks ago, when we went into the area, we were called by the nurse. A nurse called Sister Pumla was like the mother of the area, documenting all the difficulty of the people, people being hungry, no water, drug abuse, unemployment. People have nothing to eat. They don't have food to take their medication. And the thing that actually started it off, her patients were not getting better. And she couldn't understand why. And she realized the diabetic patients were coming, they were taking insulin, but they were not eating any food to counteract the effect of the insulin. And she found they were getting weak and worse. And through medium, she got hold of us. We took in 400 parcels, and then realized there's a far bigger problem in Klaplat. Soon after that, by some strange coincidence, our co coordinators from Sutherland call us and said the farmers are crying, they have no fodder, the animals are dying, there's a major crisis in Klippalat. And then we realized that the intervention was multifold that was required. And on Friday, we then went in. We took in the drilling machines, three truckloads of fodder, 1,000 food parcels. And we remember we did 400 food parcels before that. We're now supporting also a feeding center in the area. And we took in water and nutritionally enriched foods for the children. That's just the start. Fortunately, we've already drilled. We, we didn't have to drill. The first two boreholes we found were old boreholes that were drilled and nobody utilized them. We blew them open. One was in the school, one was in an outlying area. And last night, we started drilling a third one near the water reservoir. If that works, where you can take a major burden off the area and help the whole area with water. So you're a charity, and am I correct, you're doing this with donations from the South African public and your sponsors, or are you getting any assistance from the local municipality in the area? No, no, no assistance from anyone. The, these are, it's on our own money, it's our own balls with public money, and look, recently most of the money has been going for COVID-19, it hasn't gone for water or fodder. We've been taking that out of our reserves, and we started taking it out from the reserves again. These are not the first balls we've drilled. In the mm. last two years, we've drilled 400 balls. And we've, given, we've delivered 650 truckloads of fodder, including 160 train coaches loads of fodder. So I, this is public support. I just simply don't understand where the local authorities are. Where is government in all of this? This is a rural area. It's a farming area. Um, does it all fall under Hrafrenet? Tell me more about who is meant to be stepping in here. Look, it doesn't matter which area it is. It's meant to be run by, it's, there's a balance between municipalities and water and water affairs, the Department of Water and Sanitation. We have been in contact with the Minister Lindy Sulu. She is, she's keen, in fact, she's talking to us tomorrow, and she's keen to support the different areas. But look, we've spoken to her on many occasions, and she said, you, you know for a fact what has happened in the department that I've taken over. There's been a crisis in the water section. Billions of rents have got lost. It has been stolen. Money that's supposed to be earmarked for boards is being used by municipalities to pay for electricity and other accounts, and lots of money has disappeared. She said, we need to sort the problem out, but with new stringent measures where they stop everything, you know, it, it's, there's, there's, there's internal systems they need to sort out. But while they're sorting out, and what, that's what we're going to tell you tomorrow, it's not something that can take months. Yeah. And I'm going to say it quite bluntly. Three things government don't understand, three words. Urgency, emergency, and disaster. Those are three words they don't understand, because if you declare that, it means you do something this afternoon, the latest tomorrow morning, or the worst 48 hours, not six or seven months later. Hraf, a club plot is only one example. The calls, people are crying the entire Eastern Cape from everywhere, and we are afraid. Every time we come on TV, we get flooded with calls because people see what we're doing somewhere else. What about my idea? Doctor, can you what give us an idea? idea of how many, how many people are being affected, and of the people that are battling, um, 
are people dying? I mean, is it, is it that critically bad? Look, I can't tell you if people are dying. That's only a hospital facility can tell you. We want to know whether they died from hunger, they died from thirst, or they died from not taking a medication. That's very difficult to prove. But what we can tell you is they are suffering. The children have no water. Children are going. Let's, let's take four critical things that are required in Eastern Cape. One is water. Two is food. Three is water for animals. And fourth, PPE is for hospitals. We get flooded for calls for all these three, four things. And children, you, you mentioned it in your introduction, people are eating tortoises, eating cats and dogs. We were, a mother told us her child, her children, know the taste of all the plants because they're eating plants. We've witnessed children running to dump sites when the dump trucks come just to find something to scavenge in the dirt. And we saw children eating from serrated jam tins. We saw them eating from peanut butter bottles. And this is not a new experience to us only. People from all over Eastern Cape are saying this story is supposed to be told a long time ago. We are all too afraid to speak. We get calls from leaders of political parties, councillors, community leaders saying, thank you very much for exposing this. Eastern Cape is a forgotten province. People have forgotten that we survived, that we exist. Nobody knows who we are. And we've been going through this difficulty, not now. In a place called Moy Plus, they haven't had water for 10 years. You go to schools, the toilets are still put toilets. There's no water in the toilets. Kids have nothing to drink, nothing to eat. And there's, there's hundreds and hundreds of calls and emails wanting help in Eastern Cape. And I'm sure after this program tonight, our phones are going to go crazy again. Doctor, what can we do? What can members of the public watching tonight, what can they do? Is it simply about making donations to charities such as yours that work in the area? It's purely about money. It's nothing to, of course, there is other things they can do. If anybody can come forward to water tankers, uh, we've got water tankers working Monday to Sunday from 5 in the morning till 10 at night. And like when towns break, run short, kind of suddenly went into difficulty. Adelaide is in difficulty every day. Craft in it, there's an increased demand of water. Makanda, there's an increased demand of water. King Williamstown, Queenstown, Butterworth is about to shut down. Amtata, there's a problem. We need water tankers. We need fodder for animals. We need support for food parcels. And of course, we need money to drill boats. Dr. Imtia Suleiman, it is a very distressing picture you are painting, but thank you so much for telling us about it, and I do hope that your discussions with the minister bear fruit tomorrow. That, of course, Dr. Imtia Suleiman of the charity Gift of the Giver.